skills in defending the faith. Bless the class now as we begin. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, as I call your name, let me know that you are here. Israel. Idmail in Israel. Um, I cannot I cannot hear any response. Israel. Morning, sir. Yes, sir. I'm here present. Okay. Solin. Present, sir. Wood. Present, sir. Richard Roy. Um, Hooper, Sister Hooper. Okay. We're going to look at the test that you did last week. Before I move on to a new lesson. Not that one, not that one, not that one. That one. All right, thank you. We're going to be looking over at the tests that you did, and if you have any remaining questions or comments, you can let me know. So last week you did a test based on lesson number 11 entitled, The Worldwide Flood is the Key to Understand What the Fossil Record Shows Us and Why the Evolutionary Origin of Life and Its Development is False. Okay, the first question was, what two evidences prove that the animal fossils in the rocks were all living at the same period of time instead of different periods of time? Some of you put down two examples of fossil graveyards. Now, fossil graveyards is one of the evidences that proves that these living creatures in the past were living at the same period of time. But let me go back to the, the lesson itself. And I want to show you something. This one right here. Okay, now the two evidences would be a rock layer named for a specific period of time contains fossils from different time periods according to the evolutionary interpretation. You see evolutionists interpret each rock layer as a separate or different period of time. But when we find that fossils are being found, quote, in the wrong place all the time, it's not so much that they're really in the wrong place. They're only in the wrong place because evolutionists don't expect them to be in that rock layer. For to them, that rock layer is a different period of time 
from the period of time, according to evolution, that they should be in. But all the time, we find that fossils are being found in the wrong place, in a rock layer that evolutionists say they don't belong to that rock layer. So what this shows us is that these rock layers are not different periods of time, but different sediments that were laid down quickly and which fossilized quickly in a, a catastrophic worldwide flood that took place a long time ago. The second evidence are the, the fossil graveyards. So there are vast fossil graveyards found throughout the world consisting of animals and plants which evolutionists have placed in different periods of time represented by the different rock layers. But these animals and plants from so-called different periods of time are found mixed up together. So since they're all together, how could one have evolved into the other? And how could they have been at different periods of time? So if you put down for the answer to number one, that in Agate Springs, Nebraska, USA, there is a fossil graveyard of about 9,000 animals and plants, such as rhinos or rhinoceroses, horses, camels, giant wild boars, birds, plants, trees, seashells, and fish. And you give that as one evidence. I would give that as evidence of the fossil graveyard. And if you went on to give me another evidence from the fossil graveyard, I would not accept that as another evidence because it's just an example of the same evidence that you started out with. So that is why in marking your papers, some of you who are expecting to get full marks for question number one just got um, half of the total amount of points available. Any question on that? Yes, sir. Um, there is some very good explanation that you gave us, sir. Based on the explanation that you gave us, because first, uh, well, for the first time, I was giving these two things that we have here, because I've studied them, I've studied them as the evidence. But when after I asked the question, well, it was not me, but a Blundell asked, what should we give? And you said example. So this is the reason why I have given so I think this one here in Agate Springs and the other one. Now, um, I think probably it is because of a misunderstanding or something that this has happened. But um, is what you are saying is that the second one, if you give these examples, it will be logically for um, number two for the fossil graveyard. Is that what you say, sir? Well, you could give number two as one of the evidences. You could give number two as one of the evidences for question number one, but it wouldn't, it would not be enough to fully answer question number one because Fossil graveyards is just one of the evidences. And another evidence is that fossils that are thought not to be in a particular layer of rock are being found in the so-called wrong place all the time, showing that these fossils do not belong to different periods of time. So number one on the screen would have been one of the answers to question number one, a rock right. layer named for a specific period of time contains fossils from different time periods. All right, sir. So th these are the different time periods. So 
um, as the evolutionists have interpreted them. But the layers of rock are not really different periods of time, but different sediments or layers that were laid down quickly at the same period of time. And that is why fossils are being found in the so-called wrong place all the time. They're not in the wrong place. It's just that they were buried at the same time as other fossils. Okay, thank you for your comment on the question. Let me go back to the test quickly. Okay, the test again, good. Now number two, describe any two animal fossil graveyards would be answered by the different examples of fossil graveyards that you have in the, the lesson. So let me go back to that lesson. Good morning, Brother Buckland and others. My apologies, please. Good, good morning, Sister Hooper, welcome. Okay, Thank you. so question number two deals with fossil graveyards and there are specific fossil graveyards all over the world and you just needed to mention two of them. For example, in a Gate Springs, Nebraska, <coughs> USA, there is a fossil graveyard of about 9,000 animals and plants. Rhinos, horses, camels, giant wild boars, birds, plants, trees, seashells, and fish. I want you to see the significance. The evolutionists think that we all descended from a fish. They think that our original ancestor was a fish swimming in the sea. Now, that fish evolved or developed, they say, into amphibians, that is creatures that can live in both the water and on the dry land. Amphibians evolved into reptiles and reptiles evolved into birds, birds evolved into mammals, and uh, mammals evolved into the ancestors of humans and apes. And then we came along at the very end of the evolution um, process. But when you have fish in the same place as you have birds, how can we say that fish evolved into birds when they're both found in the same graveyard? That doesn't make any sense. Another example of fossil graveyards is in the Alaska area. Alaska is in the, the, the north, northwest in the United States of America. And not far from it, across the the Bering Strait is the, the, the country <coughs> known, the, the province in Russia known as Siberia. This is in Russia. So the two areas are not far from each other. And in this area, Alaska and the Siberia area were found a graveyard of bears, wolf, fox, badgers, saber tooth, cat, Jaguar, lynx, mammoth, mastodon, horses, camel, antelope, bison, caribou, moose, elk, sheep, musk, ox, yak, ground sloth, and several rodents. So you have some, some creatures that you may call, they are creeping things as the Bible would describe them. And you have large four-legged animals like the mammoth, which is a larger version of the elephant, how could all of these creatures be together if evolution were true? Because it would be said that the primitive or the less developed creatures would have evolved into the more developed creatures. The ground sloth and the different rodents would have evolved into 
more complex creatures. Yet all of them, the complex and the simple creatures, are buried together. In France, hundreds of thousands of marine creatures, marine means creatures that lived in the sea, are buried with amphibians, that is those that can live in the sea and live on the land, spiders, scorpions, notice the little creatures, millipedes, creatures with a thousand legs, insects and reptiles in a fossil graveyard. Now, according to evolution, the fish, which is a marine creature, evolved into amphibians and amphibians evolved into reptiles. Yet you have these three, marine creatures, amphibians and reptiles all together in the same graveyard in France. In Wyoming, in the United States of America, alligators, fish, again you have fish here, birds, turtles, mammals, many varieties of insects and palm leaves are buried in the Green River again. How could fish have evolved into birds? Or how could fish have evolved into alligators and alligators into, into birds? and birds into mammals when they're all together in the same graveyard. So you, you were to have given any two of these examples that I have here for answering question number two. Any comment on that? No, sir. No, sir. Okay, let us go back to the test. Okay, number three, if these animal fossils belonged to different periods of time and one had evolved into another, how is it that they were found buried together? That was the question I asked at the end of the examples of fossil graveyards. And I would argue that according to the theory of evolution, the simplest creature evolved first, the very simplest creature. And it started in the, the sea, in the first seas. And it developed legs and walked out onto the dry land and was able to live both in the water and on the dry land and evolved into more complex creatures as millions of years passed. But based upon the fossil graveyards that are all over the world, in which we have the simplest creatures buried together with the most complex creatures, then it could not have been that these animals lived at different periods of time and had evolved into a more complex form of life since they were all buried together in the same grave. An answer along that line would have been a good argument to prove that these creatures all lived at the same period of time and did not evolve into the other one. Any comment on question number three? Okay, number four, describe any two evidences that prove that these living things, which are now fossils, that is, they have now turned into rock, they're dead and they're now turned into rock, were buried and turned into fossils rapidly. So let us go back to that lesson. Okay. The answer to that question is found in this section. Evidences that these living things, which are now fossils, were buried and fossilized first. So one answer is all around the world in rock layer after rock layer, there are billions of dead things that have been buried 
in water carried mud and sand, their state of preservation frequently shows that there had to be rapid burial and fossilization, just like one would expect in the flood of Noah's time. Now this, this part I have put into capital letters because that is key, their state of preservation. If they were not buried rapidly, then they could have decayed. If they were not buried rapidly, they could have been eaten by survivors of the flood. But their state of preservation is so good, as I have referred to later on in this lesson, that you have soft-bodied creatures like an octopus that are perfectly preserved and they still have ink in them. Their, their, their tentacles are preserved. Their head is preserved. These soft-bodied creatures would have decayed or they would have been eaten by bacteria long time and would have left no trace of them because they are soft-bodied creatures. In a previous lesson, lesson number 10, at the end of the first trimester, at the end of the, tri the, th the third trimester last year, we looked at jellyfish. Jellyfish are also soft-bodied creatures that you wouldn't have expected them to have been preserved if they were slowly buried over millions of years. And so the state of preservation of these creatures is one evidence that they must have been buried quickly. And again, they must have also been turned into rock quickly so as to be so well-preserved, especially those soft-bodied creatures. Another evidence that these creatures were buried and fossilized first is when you look at the layers of rocks, it shows that there could not have been any long time between one layer of rock and another to be significant, to take into account. Because when you look in the rocks, they have animal tracks, that is animal footprints. What are animal footprints doing in the rocks? How is it that these, these footprints were not erased? They must have been covered up quickly and they must have turned into rock quickly. Ripple marks like you have different waves of water moving at different times. And yet these ripple marks, which left their imprints and hardened into, into rock are so well preserved. Even raindrop marks. Can you imagine? Even raindrop marks have been preserved in the rocks. If they were not buried quickly and hardened into rock quickly to leave the imprint of the raindrop in them, if it took millions of years for this to happen, you wouldn't have any raindrop marks. Let me give an example of what happens today. I have seen in Jamaica, when people are making sidewalks and they, they pour out the, the, the cement and they smooth the cement and leave it there to dry. And sometimes you have some human beings walking on the wet cement and the cement dries quickly and has permanently recorded the imprint of their feet. Sometimes dogs walk across the cement and you see the dog footprints. Well, it's the same thing here with the sedimentary rocks that when they were still wet, these different animals were walking up and down on them, perhaps running. And rain was falling. 
and yet even the raindrop mark has been preserved. So this shows it must have been rapid, not slow, not millions of years. Also another evidence that could have been used is the scarcity of erosion. Now, if soil is left by itself for a long period of time, different kinds of erosion can take place. And by erosion, I mean removing the top soil, whether it is through strong wind that is blowing or whether it is through um, flood after flood taking place and, and moving the layer of soil away. That's how erosion takes place. But there was such a rapid laying down of the different layers of, of, of soft sediments that when it hardened into rocks, there was hardly any sign of erosion of the soil. Also, there is hardly any soil formation. It takes a while for soil to form because soil is formed from the dead and decaying animals that are in it. It does not form quickly and there is hardly any soil formation between one layer of rock and another, which shows that it couldn't have been slowly laid down over millions of years. Animal burrows Burrows are holes that some animals dig into the ground, like rats. They dig holes in the ground, or rabbits. They dig holes in the ground. Foxes dig holes in the ground. Remember Jesus said, foxes have holes? Well, that is what he's referring to, animal burrows. There is hardly any animal burrows between one layer of rock and another because not enough time for them to do that. Roots between layers of rock. If you have a layer of rock that has been around for millions of years, you're going to have seeds that are blown in the air that are laid down on the rock and it's going to germinate and send down roots, but there's hardly any roots between the layers of rock, which show that these layers must have been deposited in quick succession. And then take a look at this big um, sedimentary rock. These are people here at the bottom. I don't know if you noticed that before. These are people. And this is the, this is the first layer of rock. This is the second layer. This is the third. This is the fourth, and that's the fifth. And notice how it has been folded up so neatly. Ordinarily, if you were to bend a hard rock, it would break. These rocks must have been bent when they were still soft and they hardened quickly in that shape. Okay, so, so there is no cracking in the rocks and there is no melting is just a laying down of one layer of sediment over the other, which quickly hardened into rock. So this shows that all the layers must have been still soft when they were bent. So these are evidences. These are some evidences that the, the layers of rock were laid down quickly and that um, it wasn't something slowly that happened. Going back to the test, let's look at the next question. So, um, yes. it was a book and for a question. What question you did there, just now? Question three? The question three is the one I just finished looking at. Okay, so um, in answer to that, you, um, I think we. Really... So each each of these points stand by themselves. 
Yes, the, these questions are these questions are all related to each other, but they're not really they're not really following up on the previous question. They're just standing by themselves. So, um, for instance, for question three, um, could oh, I was answering question. Three. I was really answering question four. Describe any two oh, evidences that prove question that these four. living things, which are now fossils, were buried and turned into fossils rapidly. Uh, I'd answered question three a few minutes before, but I was just finished answering question four, okay. proving okay. that they were buried and turned into fossils rapidly. So it's not three, it's four. Is that why you're asking if the questions depended on each other? Or that they no. stood by themselves? Uh, or what question do you have on either I, number I think three or I number had four? A question concerning, right, the question had to do with um, synchronizing two points. I'm not sure which question was that. Uh, in answering okay. the question, it, it was number um, one. Instead it was of number one. Number one is asking what two evidences prove that the animal fossils and the rocks were all living at the same period of time instead of different periods of time. And one of the answers would be fossil graveyards in which you have animals that were believed to have evolved into another, all living in all buried in the same graveyard. And another answer that was expected was different from the fossil graveyards. It is that you find that fossils keep on being found by evolutionists in what they call the wrong rock layer all the time, simply because these are not different periods of time, but that all these creatures were living at the same period of time and that is why they're found at different places in the rocks, which evolutionists don't expect them to be. All right. Um, what happened on question one is that some, some of you use two examples of animal fossil graveyards to give us evidences that animal fossils were all living at the same period of time. And what I really wanted was fossil graveyards, yes, you didn't have to go into the detail if you, unless you are answering question two. And the other answer for this is that um, animal fossils are being found in the wrong places all the time, which shows that they're not really restricted to a particular layer because they were all living in the same period of time. So they could be found in any layer of rock because they could have been buried by a different sediment from another animal of their own kind. And they're found in different layers rather than one and the same layer. Okay. Okay. Okay, let us move on to number five. Give any two recent observations and experiments which show that a long period of time is not necessary to explain the fossil record. Okay, so let us go back to the lesson for that. Okay, this is it. Recent observations and experiments have shown that long periods of time are not necessary to explain the fossil record. And here is an interesting one, which, which um, many of you gave as an example. There are many examples of rock forming rapidly. A clock, a spark plug, and keys have all been found in sedimentary rocks. And we know that clocks, spark plugs, and keys were not fossils, sorry, from millions of years ago, but are recent inventions. 
So if it really takes millions of years for a rock to form, then what is a clock or a spark plug or keys doing in rocks? It just shows you that it doesn't take millions of years. Another example, evolutionary paleontologist, Dr. Philip Curry admitted that fossilization can take notice, quote, a few hours, a few hours. Now that is a great admission from someone who believes in evolution. He admitted that uh, an animal that is dead turning into a rock or sediments can harden into a rock in a few hours. It doesn't have to take the long time that evolutionists say it took. Another example of this, fossil fuels do not need millions of years to form. At the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory in the United States, scientists were able to turn a solution of algae into crude oil by pressure cooking it for just 30 minutes and it turned into oil, which they could refine. And in this one, it says that it mimics nature, it imitates nature. Well, if it imitates nature, then nature itself would not need millions of years to form oil produces oil in much the same way that nature produces oil, but it is completed in around 30 minutes. And this is coming from Australia. So in the United States and in Australia, they did the same experiments and found that they can make crude oil from, from vegetation, from vegetable matter, in just 30 minutes. It doesn't take millions of years as we are told in evolution. Also, wood can turn into rock. Petrify means to turn into rock. Wood can petrify rapidly. Several lab experiments have devised ways in which this can be done and this mirrors natural settings. Now, if it mirrors natural settings, then it's an admission that in nature, this also is done, that wood can turn into rock rapidly. And one of you mentioned this, this, this is a good example. I believe this was, this was wood. He used this example in the fossil record there are copulating frog hoppers, which had to have been fossilized quickly for them to be found in the same position and be well preserved. Okay, this is a good one. Five octopus fossils have been found in Lebanon. All eight arms, muscles, suckers and ink. If these were not buried and fossilized quickly, they could not have been preserved. It is known that the ocean floor is teeming, that is, has a quite a lot of bacterial life, which could have eaten the octopuses had they not been quickly buried and fossilized. So do you have any questions on that question? No, sir. No, sir. Okay, let's move on quickly to the next one. Next question is, how do you know that the fossils belong to a time after sin had entered the world? That's a very important question. Very, very important. How do you know it happened after sin had entered the world? Okay, so let's look at the lesson again. 
It's in, it's in the conclusion. So let's move on to the conclusion. Okay. Look at number one. It says the fossils show that there was cancer of the bone, teeth marks, and signs of drowning. Now consider this. Before sin entered the world, did God consider his creation very good? Genesis chapter 1 verse 31 says that when God looked at what he had created, he said it was very good. Do you think God would have called cancer of the bone very good? Do you think he would have considered it very good that different animals had teeth mark imprints in them? Do you think that God wanted any of his creatures to drown? No, when God created everything, he said it was very good. It is after sin had entered the world that disease started. It is after sin had entered the world that animals started to attack animals and to destroy animals and eat each other, hence the teeth marks. And it is because of sin in the days of Noah that we find that most of the creatures, including the human beings, were drowned. The fossils show these three features, cancer, teeth marks, and signs of drowning. Also, going down to this section, this drowning, rapid burial, and fossilization could not have happened before sin and death had entered the world. The Bible tells us that when sin entered the world, death followed. Death is a direct consequence of sin. Before sin had entered the world, there was no death. And so we find that the presence of fossils show that sin must have already entered the world. Fossils are dead, preserved animals and plants and humans. So death had entered the world. That is why you can have fossils, dead animals and plants that have been preserved in rocks. So it must have happened after sin had entered the world for death is the direct result of sin. And death did not affect only human beings. But in Romans chapter 8, verses 20 and 22, we are told that the whole creation has been affected by sin. That the whole creation is groaning in the pains of childbirth until now. And that they have been subjected against their will to, to death and corruption or decay. So this drowning, rapid burial, and fossilization must have happened after sin had entered the world. And we see in Genesis 7, verse 23, that everything that was not in the ark was drowned in the worldwide flood in the days of Noah. So all of this happened after Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve is that period of time they lived in the period of time when sin entered the world, for they were the ones who ate the forbidden fruit and sinned against God and brought disease and suffering and death into the world. Okay, any question on that? No, I just want to say in, in answering that question about when did when did the worldwide flood happen? Was it before sin had entered the world or after sin? It is not enough to simply um, quote this that you have in the conclusion. In addition to putting it down in your own words, you will need to show, you will need to demonstrate that it had to have happened after sin had entered. Not just to put it down, but to prove that it did. 
like what I have done here. Um, before sin, there was no cancer. Before sin, animals did not eat each other. Before sin, there was no death. There would be no drowning. So you'd have to argue your case like a lawyer in court. Give proof, give evidence that this must have happened after sin entered the world. Any comments or questions on that? No, sir. Okay, let us move on. Okay, number seven, what do evolutionists think a layer of rock means? Well, that's a simple question. They think that each layer of rock represents a period of time of millions of years. Number eight, why do evolutionists think that a fossil is in the wrong layer of rock? Well, they have theorized that the simplest form of life should be in the first layer of rock and each layer of rock above it should show more developed and advanced creatures. So when they find simple creatures in a later layer of rock, it causes them to wonder what is it doing there? Isn't it supposed to be in a period of time when creatures are more advanced? And so they say it's found in the wrong layer. But the truth is, all these different layers are not different periods of time, but the same period of time. That's why they're all found in the same, um, that's why they're found in different layers and not, they're not all restricted to a particular layer. Number nine, what do the perfect state of the preservation of fossils, animal tracks, ripple marks, and raindrop marks teach about the time it took for these things to be buried and turned into rock? Well, the perfect state of the preservation of animal footprints, ripple marks, raindrop marks shows that the burial and the fossilization was very quick. Otherwise, you couldn't preserve raindrop marks. Imagine preserving raindrop marks. That must have been rapid. Number 10, some layers of rock are very bent without any evidence of having been cracked or having been melted. What does this teach about the state of the sediments when they were being laid down? Well, they must have been laid down quickly, one after the other because it didn't have much time for the development of soil or for roots to go down into the rock or for, or for animals to bore holes and form burrows where they can live and or maybe put their young ones. It must have been rapid since we don't have these things, much of these things found in the rocks between the layers. Any question on any of these? No, sir. Okay. Now in the next few minutes that we have, let's move on to the next lesson that is here. I know you're there somewhere. Right, That's where you are. Okay. Okay, we're going to be starting this lesson. Of course, you know that the time is almost finished, but we're just going to start it. Lesson number 12 Do similar body parts and similar DNA? mean one common ancestor or one and the same designer? Now, the reason I'm asking this question is that one of the arguments that evolutionists give for proving that there was evolution is that different creatures have similar body parts. 
And when you look into their cells, at the DNA, which has the coded instructions for the formation of different parts of the body, that different creatures are so similar in the DNA that they, they have. And so evolutionists are theorizing that every single one of us and the animals and even the plants and the trees originated from one common ancestor. Okay. Let me give you an illustration. It's not found in this lesson, but I will give it to you because I'm just introducing the topic. Did you know that we share with bananas 50% of the DNA? Half of the information that goes into the making of bananas are found in human DNA. You know what that is showing evolutionists? It is showing evolutionists that bananas was part of our ancestry. So we are questioning this. Does it mean necessarily that we share one common ancestor with bananas since we, we, we find that there are 50% similarities between bananas and human beings? Does it mean that um, our ancestors were bananas? <laughs> or does it mean that we have one and the same designer mm -hmm. who uses similarities in the information to put into different living creatures? That's what we will be investigating, God permitting, next week. Do similar body parts and similar DNA mean one common ancestor or one and the same designer? That is the issue. That is the question that we will be exploring, investigating next week, God permitting. Okay, the time is gone. So thank you all. And I will see you again um, later. Yes, sir.